Good evening, NABJ family. Uh, welcome to this webinar. Uh, the Black News Channel launches November 15th in 33 million homes. Gary Wardlow, Vice President of Programming and News, is here to tell us everything we need to know about the nation's new premier channel for us by us. Welcome, Gary. Thank you. Thank you very much for inviting me. Okay, so let's get started. We've got so many people who have so many questions. Um, let me start off with Black News Channel. How will we all be able to watch? We're going to be carried uh, on a number of cable systems and satellite. Charter, Comcast, um, I'm missing one. Charter, Comcast, we're working with Cox, we'll be on DISH, we'll be on uh, Sling, and we're adding more and more folks as time go on. Okay, that's good. So let's talk about the ownership. Who's behind Black News Channel? The concept originated about 14 years ago when J.C. Watts, the former congressman from Oklahoma and an Oklahoma Sooner, I won't hold that against him, <laughs> got the notion that America was in need of a, a different voice from what he was seeing. So he hooked up with a guy in Tallahassee, they became friends, by the name of Bob Brilliante, and they, those two put their minds together and started looking for funding to launch a African-American-based news channel. It took a number of years to find the appropriate funding, but they did. JC is the chairman uh, of the board, and Bob Brilliante is our CEO. Uh, they put the channel together, and we're building a 25,000-square-foot facility here in Tallahassee. Beautifully designed building. Uh, the set is being built by Dan Devlin, who is a premier set builder. I believe we're paying like one and a half million bucks for the set. Uh, and a bunch of other things to go along with it. So we're well funded and uh, we're ready to roll. Okay, now you said J.C. Watts, you know I have to follow up on any type of political bents. Um, will this be completely um, nonpartisan, not left, not right, you know, just straight news? Great With question. opinions from other, you know, analysts. Great. Yeah, great question, I get it all the time. Number one, I would not work for this company if I was being asked to slant the news uh, politically. I'm an apolitical person. Uh, I'm a news guy. I stand on the cap on the uh, First Amendment, and uh, they hired me with that notion. I can tell you, honestly, since I've been with these people, not one person has asked me my political bent or my religious bent. My job is to program this with... Um, compelling programming that will appeal to an African-American audience and to have the news that's down the middle. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'm going to prohibit pundits. So you won't see the, the folks sitting on the set yelling and screaming at each other on this channel. The news that we're going to produce will be in long form in most cases. We're going to take stories and we're going to give those stories an opportunity to be told. Having been a local news director for a number of years, one of the biggest complaints I would get from reporters is, I can't tell this story in a minute and a half. I can't tell this story in a minute 10. I need more time. And if the format allowed, a generous producer might give you two minutes. Well, we intend to air stories that are five and six minutes long. We intend to vet all sides of a particular story from an investigative nature but we're going to stay away from, if, you know, if you come to our network looking for who got shot and who raped whom and all that kind of stuff, you better go look for some other, some other place because we're not going to do that. Okay. So let's talk about planned programming. 24 hours is a lot to fill. Um, how will those hours initially be structured? Morning, afternoon, evening newscast that will be pre uh, repeated throughout the day, documentaries, talk shows. What about sports programming? What's going on with the programming that's planned? Good question. Starting off with our morning news block will start at 6 o'clock in the morning and will go until 10 o'clock. So there'll be a four-hour news block where we're going to be covering uh, the entire nation. I'm going to have news bureaus established in a number of cities to start. Washington, New York, 
Atlanta, Chicago, Houston, uh, Los Angeles, Jacksonville, Orlando. We're reaching out to Birmingham and New Orleans. Uh, so, what about Detroit? I'm sorry, I left out Detroit. Thank you. We also have a bureau in Detroit. And, and Chicago. Got Chicago working on that now. Okay. So where, wherever the major populations of African Americans live in the country, we intend to have bureaus in those those places. So we're going to go around the clock and around the world to talk to uh, reporters in the various bureaus about stories in their markets that are of interest nationally to the African American audience. Uh, our newscast is going to also have a lot of feature stories in it, things that you would not normally see on other, on other uh, network news stations. For instance, I found out there's a little boy at Southern University in HBCU uh, in uh, Baton Rouge who's a sophomore and he's eight years old. Well, I haven't seen that story anywhere else. So we're going to have an opportunity to do that story. Or we found out there's a little 12-year-old girl who's a college professor, a, a little black girl who's a college professor. Well, we're looking and we're going to invite uh, our audience to submit to us those kind of ideas from around the country and those are the kinds of stories that we're going to tell. Uh, when you talk about, now we're, gonna, we're not going to ignore news, hard news, if there's something of a major nature that happens in New York, Chicago, Washington. But there's more ways to tell that story than body bags on the street and flashing blue lights. So we're going to challenge our people to find different ways to, uh, to tell those stories. Now okay. that's the news part. Let, let me finish. That's the news in the morning. Then we're going to come back with primetime news that starts at uh, 7 o'clock until 10, which will be repeated for the West Coast, so it will be in their primetime. But I have a, <laughs> I got to tell you, my problem isn't putting other programs on the network. My problem is vetting all the ideas that are coming in. Uh, mm -hmm. We've got programs from celebrities that I'm not at liberty to give you the names because we want to put out a big news release about our launch. But I'm going to tell you, it's pretty impressive stuff. A-list people who have stories to tell from around the country. And so we're going to tell those in documentaries. One I will tell you about, uh, Joan Pendergrass, the, the wife of Teddy Pendergrass. She is a fascinating woman who has a story behind the music. And so we have gotten her producer to allow us to use that as one of our launch day uh, documentaries. I think the public's going to find it fascinating. So those are the kinds of documentaries we're looking for. Okay. Um, what about sports uh, for all the sports journalists within the NABJ? Um, what type of programming or, you know, job opportunities are for them? We're going to offer our audience a unique look at sports that doesn't normally get covered. We are tying into all of the HBCU athletic programs. We're going to have um, daily reports from our HBCU partners. We're going to establish bureaus at every HBCU that we can work with that has a journalism department. So we'll have reports from those schools about their athletic programs. I'm going to have a sports director and a secondary sports person and a third sports person. We're going to go to the Bayou Classic. We're going to go to the Florida Classic. We're going to go to the Music City Classic. So all those kinds of things that are interesting to the African-American audience that you don't find in, on the other stuff you'll find on our network. But we're not going to ignore the NBA and we're not going to ignore the uh, Olympics. I've already purchased some Olympic programming that's going to put us right in league with everybody else. We're going to do the NBA. We're going to do the... Um, uh, NFL, and for believe it or not, there are a lot of us out there who now like hockey. I got you covered. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's good. That's good. So when we talk about the uh, sustainability of the channel, uh, we've seen the Black Family Channel that didn't survive. BET's news programming is completely different than decades ago. TV One no longer has Roland Martin's news show. Um, talk about the sustainability um and the marketing strategy of the channel to make sure that it survives? We are well-funded. The reason a lot of these programs and networks fail is that they run out of funding. I'm not concerned about that for the first five years. 
And if we're not making a profit in five years, then we probably ought to go off the air. So we've got the money to sustain us. Uh, we've got some backers that are, you know, they want to see it work. Uh, you'd be surprised, perhaps, at the number of people, now that people recognize that the Black News Channel is real, investors are coming in all the time. So I don't have a have an issue with that. We hire people. We're hiring them for three years to start, like any other contract cycle. So we think that we're going to be there at the end as well. Okay. Now let's talk about recruitment efforts. Um, how has the recruiting process been going thus far? Uh, the agents found out early on that we were going to be hiring a lot of people. And they have been sending me every African-American, Hispanic, and Japanese person I think has ever been associated with their agencies. There also has been a lot of word of mouth that's going on. I have not really focused on hiring a lot of people. I've hired a few, but I want to get to NABJ in Miami. I'm going to give the NABJ family an opportunity to, uh, to have dibs, first dibs, on a lot of the positions, including prime anchor jobs in the afternoon, morning anchors, sports, weather, all those kind of jobs. I'm hoping to use the NABJ floor as a place to get recruits and uh, move forward. Okay. Um, I want to bring up, because as part of, you know, the convention, before the convention, NABJ has a producer's database, and the national office has sent an e-blast out about it um, maybe once or twice, including the link for members to sign up. Will the Black News Channel include the database in its recruitment efforts? I think we would be absolutely insane. I would be absolutely insane to pass up the opportunity to be able to cherry pick the best of the best when it comes to producers. Producers run shops. Good writers are always in demand. People who know how to orchestrate that kind of news are going to be golden. I'm producing two one-hour women's-based programs every day. The first show is going to be called Being a Woman. I'm going to have the morning anchor and a counterpart sit on a set that we're going to divine for them to talk to women about female issues from an intelligent standpoint, especially those issues that are Afro-American Afro issues for women which may be somewhat different than what the general population might find. Well, I need a producer who can, can do that. The second daily show is going to be called Sister to Sister. And it's going to take on more of a lighter, lighter feel. But it's going to talk about you know, marriage, dating, child rearing, those kind of things. My prime afternoon anchor will host that show every day at 4 o'clock. The other show will air every morning at 10. I need producers okay. to do that. Okay, well, members, you heard it here. If you haven't signed up uh, for the database, please do so. And we've had several members who've been hired as a result of the database, so uh, members, sign up for this database. Now, keeping on with recruitment efforts, what are some of the available positions? Um, what kind of experiences are you looking for, entry level to senior level, broadcast and digital only? Um, are any positions transferable for print journalists or Will you all pretty much prefer multi-platform journalists? I'm looking for anchor people who have major market experience. I'm looking for people to work in my bureaus who have medium market to major market experience. I'm looking for sports people who have major market experience. I'm looking for people who know how to walk, talk, and chew gum. <laughs> uh, at, at this stage of the game, I don't have MMJs. I have reporters and I have photographers. Uh, I, I think the MMJ thing has gone too far. I think the time has come to give reporters the opportunity to report, photographers the opportunity to take pictures, editors the opportunity to edit, producers the opportunity to produce. So I'm going back old school. I'm going to go back to the future and give my folks the opportunity to tell good stories all the time. Now, we're going to use a lot of the college kids from the HBCUs to also do stuff. So uh, they, basically, I'm going to try to, do, to develop a cadre of seniors at HBCUs that can then move into the ranks of on-air. 
But our station is bigger than just on air. We have some of the latest technology that's out there. So we're, we've partnered with Sony, with VizRT, with BitCentral to do all that technical background stuff. I'm also looking for a creative services director. I'm looking for creative services producers. I'm looking for creative services editors. I'm looking for digital producers. I'm looking for digital producers who want to be on the air. So I've got to hire in effect over the next few months about 100 people. So there's no, you know, there's no, <laughs> no lack of uh, folks who want to get jobs and jobs that are available. Okay. Now you talked about the HBCU um, involvement. For the non-HBCU students who want to be involved in this, um, how can they? What do you have in store for them? They can go to the website and apply like everybody else, but I am specifically targeting HBCUs. It doesn't prohibit somebody who went to Harvard or Yale to apply for a job and to get one, but I am particularly targeting HBCU grads. Okay. Um, so let's talk about the marquee faces of the channel. Um, are you looking for them? About how many? The short answer is yes. I cannot, because we're in the middle of contract negotiations with a number of people, tell you who they are. But I think that um, that people will know, recognize them right off the bat. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, let me ask this last question before we start going into um, viewer questions. ABC's Byron Pitts will be a contributor um, while staying with ABC. How did that work out, especially in terms of possible conflicts of interest or an outlet considering Black News Channel as a competitor? And I ask that question for those who may want to be a contributor um, that may be in the same situation as Byron. What steps do they need to take? I have had at least four major television groups reach out to me and ask me how they can partner with us. In today's marketplace, the one thing that most of these groups have come to recognize is that there is not enough African-American content to populate their newscast. So if you partner with me, I, in turn, will partner with you. So for the stories that we're producing that don't find a home uh, in your local market, well, you might take it from my network and use it on your station. In return, I'll get to use those stories that happen in your market that I can expand on on my station. So group heads understand that, and they, they get it. In Byron Pitts' case, Byron is a unique individual who has a unique contract with his network which gives them the opportunity to do long form pieces for us. Uh, I'm, there's a, a young, I don't know how young she is, but there is an anchor lady in one market who produced a dynamite documentary. Well, she's going to her um, general manager for permission to use it on our network. And I feel confident that he's gonna say yes. I, I think people really wanna see this thing work. It's been too long that these voices have been denied and then this is the one network where we don't apologize for being black. That's who we are. So we, we are many voices that are going to be told through the voice of the one on our network. And I don't apologize for that. That's who we are. Okay. Now getting into viewer questions, the first one, is Black News Channel going to be in the market for commissioning or co-producing documentaries from independent producers? I am working with several independent producers now that are producing a varied number of stories that we're going to be able to use. So the short answer is yes, we are. Okay. Uh, the second question, is Black News Channel interested in acquiring long-form long content from the continent of Africa? Absolutely. Okay. Um, we've got about five more so far. Will there be any business tech news? Absolutely. This is from Monique Wingard, and she says, how will they pick correspondents at each bureau? Well, that's my job, and it's totally my job. So love me or hate me, but that's what I get paid to do. <laughs> okay. And you apply, then you get vetted like everybody else. And yes, I would love to have a very good business reporter who can turn daily uh, information for our audience. 
Okay. okay. The, the next, next question, question is what about weather? And I think you answered that earlier, but if you want to do that again. I am purchasing weather metric cameras, so I will have cameras in 1,000 markets across the country. I'm uh, tying I'm tying into the WSI weather system, so we'll have the very latest equipment. And yes, I need meteorologists to populate our, our station. Okay. Next question. What types of shows will be available for children? I am an eight-year-old journalist with Time Magazine for Kids this year, but want a way to show news for kids on TV. We are going to be able to put forth news for everybody. Is there a specific half hour or hour program aimed specifically at, at children? The answer is no, not yet, because I haven't seen a show that I think is of the quality that I'd like to see. If you have an idea or you have a show that you want to vet, you can send me an email and I'll be more than happy to take a look at it. Okay, well, give your email um, quickly. Sure, it's G Word Law, that's W O R D L A W, at B as in boy, T as in Tom, N as in Nancy, C as in Charles, BTNC.tv. Okay. Next question. Will there be internships? Yes, and I'm going to pay my interns. Well, we all like to hear that. Okay. Next question. What about programming for black men? Absolutely. One of the things that most of the uh, broadcast community are missing are black men. One of the areas that black men tend to really like is that stuff around sports. So we're going to have programming about that, but there's also health programming uh, for black men. We're going to have black anchor men doing shows that are specifically designed, just like we do for the ladies. We're going to do for the guys as well. Okay. Question. Will he offer opportunities for freelancers with 25 plus years of news reporting and anchoring experience, but not in a huge African American market? The, the short answer is I can't employ everybody. And if you're not where one of our bureaus happens to be or in Tallahassee, the chances are no. I just can't have that many people. Okay. Longevity is an issue for some people. What kind of budget do you have? How much is the annual budget? Not going to be discussed on this webinar. <laughs> okay. But I have sufficient funding to do the job. Okay. Next question. Uh, can you repeat your email? Sure. It's G as in Gary, Wordlaw, W-O-R-D-L-A-W, at B-T-N-C. TV. Okay. And I will say that um, we'll make sure that we email members that email address again. Uh, here's another question. What is the appetite for international news? I'm dialing in from the Ivory Coast on West Africa. I'm sorry, in West Africa. I work for African Development Bank on the issues of social, human development, and we have lots to offer in some of the topics you've raised. Of special of special interest, the Being a Woman program. We would very much like to talk to you. Email me your contact information, and I'll be in touch. Okay. And that person also said that he's a former CNN and CBS news correspondent. Perfect. Alfonso Van Marsh. Got it. Okay. Um, that is all the questions that we had so far. Oh, here we go popping in. I'm a black news anchor reporter in the top five market. Will Black News Channel be willing to use freelancers contributors currently under contract at a major local television station to cover black news in the DMA, especially issues with gentrification? And I think you just answered that, but if you could answer again. Sure. Yeah, if your company will allow you to do that kind of work for us, we'll be more than happy to use it. In fact, I welcome it. Okay. And I have another budget question for you. It says, what budget range are you prepared to offer for independently produced docs of 30 minutes or 60 minutes? It's, it's based on the documentary. It's based on 
what's in it. I mean, there is no flat cost. There are many models that we use to do programs. Some we don't pay for at all. Others, you know, there's a cost involved, a license fee. So I'd have to actually talk to the producer to see what it is that they're offering. Okay. Uh, next question. Are you operating as a nonprofit? Do you have foundational grant dollars to operate? We're operating, operating as a for-profit uh, broadcast operation. Okay. What opportunities will be available for print reporters? Well, a reporter is a reporter. We are a broadcast operation. If a print reporter can do a transition, we can chat. We're also going to have a very active web, you know, we're going to do uh, have a very active uh, news portal for our web-based audience. We're also going to be working with, uh, with uh, some of the uh, companies on our um, OTT platforms. So there's a home for everybody who wants to reach out and talk to the black community. Okay. Um, and we have some people who have just joined and didn't hear some of the earlier questions and answers. Um, will you be willing to make on-air hires before NABJ if your contract is up? Yes, if it's the right person. Okay. Can you talk about any online opportunities? Yeah, I'm going to have a number of digital producers and reporters. Uh, we, we're in the process of setting up our platforms as we speak. Uh, we'll probably will hire five or six to start and see where it goes from there. But yes, we will have people who will be doing that. Okay. What major cable carriers will Black News Channel be on? Will it be streamed live to markets without those carriers? Uh, our partners are Comcast, Charter, Dish, Direct, I believe uh, Sling is one of them. And we're adding more and more. We're in contract negotiations with several uh, as we speak. Okay. But streaming streaming to non-carrier markets, no. Okay. Is there a five-year goal for the station? No, but there is a 20-year goal. Okay. Um, who are the major investors in this channel? Um, until it's announced publicly by one of the individuals, he wishes that not to be known as of yet, but a news release will be coming out within the next week or so, and I think it's going to be uh, quite surprising. Okay. From what bureaus will the two daily talk shows geared towards African Americans women be based in? Women be based in? They're going to base, both be based here in Tallahassee, but we're going to do an hour live broadcast from Washington, D.C. every morning at uh, 11 o'clock. Okay. Um, it says, apologies if this question has already been asked. What is your vision for the network's coverage of sports? And will you primarily be covering sports in studio in the Tallahassee Bureau, or will there be field-based opportunities opportunities for sports coverage as well? I'm going to have five IPSNG trucks scattered across the country. Tallahassee is our home base, but we're going to have bureaus in many cities across the country. And so where there is sports of interest to the African-American community in those markets, we will have it. Again, we're going to be working with the HBCUs, tying into their sports programs. So we'll have that content as well. So the anchor may be here, but the sports comes into the pipe wherever it is. I don't know if I mentioned this or not, but we're also a CNN uh, station. So I have the resources of CNN behind me as well as the Associated Press. Okay. Thank and you did not mention that earlier, so thank you for that. All right. When you mentioned there were bureaus, any idea how large they will be if you prefer to work in one market versus another, will you be given that opportunity to, to pick? No, I'm hiring people specific to markets because I want people who have knowledge of those markets. If I hire someone in Chicago, but I'm bringing them from Dallas, they know nothing about Chicago, then help me. So I want to hire people in Chicago that know Chicago, New York that know New York, Washington that knows Washington, that kind of thing. Okay. Uh, 
Gregory Hutchinson is circling back to the five-year goal, and you said 20-year goal. He says, okay, what's the 20-year goal? To win the hearts and minds of African-American viewers, period. Okay. Rome wasn't built in a day. We don't expect that we are going to launch, and every African-American in our markets are going to watch us. It takes time to build that. Look how long it took ESPN or, or CNN or, or Fox, all the rest of them. So we know we're the, the, the guy who comes in last. Or, and so we're going to have to build trust with the, with the uh, community. So our goal is to last for a long time. Okay. Does, Does the network have a goal in terms of Nielsen ratings? Yes. <laughs> Every network wants ratings. But we're not, our model isn't based on that. Our model is based on getting on the air, getting people to watch us and growing the audience. Uh, the, I'm not the, sale guy, the sales guy, I'm not the ad guy. Obviously they get paid to bring money to the network and we're not stupid. I know it takes money to pay all you people out there to want to work. So ratings are important, but our primary goal at lunch isn't the ratings. Okay. By the way, our goal is to launch to 33 to 45 million homes. Okay. If there is not streaming of programming, can you please tell us more about your digital website presence? Our digital website presence will be very active. You'll be able to come to our website and VOD stories that have been on our website, but we're not, because of our contracts, we can't stream the network directly because that's what the cable company is there for. So we can't go behind our own partner and offer to, you know, the public something that they're paying us uh, to run. So that's kind of the, the streaming mentality. But that you'll be able to come to our website and find stories uh, that you wouldn't find anywhere else. Okay. Will Black News Channel be available on Roku and other streaming platforms? And I think you just answered that. Sling is a definite, and we're working on the others. Okay. What's the primary distribution model? Cable, digital. I it's cable. That already. Yeah, we're a linear, we're a linear cable company. Okay. Is it better to contact you directly or have our agent do so? Either way, just don't call me, please. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> just send it to to my email address, please. Okay. Uh, this last question, which I'm pretty sure a few more will probably slip in after I ask this. Will you have competitive salaries? I think so. No, I'm not ABC. I'm not CBS. I haven't been in business 60 years. We're just starting. But you're not going to starve to death to come work for us. Okay. And you know what? Let me ask this about um, will this be a union shop or no? Florida is a right to work state. Okay. Okay. Uh, another question crept in. Which cable systems do you deal with at this point? Uh, the ones I've mentioned before, Charter, Comcast are the two cable companies, Dish and Direct, but we're working, and, and I'm not at liberty to get into the, the financial stuff, but we're working with a number of other cable companies to clear the network. Okay. Time um, Warner, I forgot that one. That's a big one. Please forgive me. But Time yeah. Warner is another one of the companies we're working with. Okay. Um, I don't have any more questions from viewers, um, but are there, you know, anything that you think that we've left out um, that you want to make sure that our members know that they're, ready for, let's say, when you're ready to see them um, in Miami at the convention, what should they come prepared with? A resume and a link to their work. Okay. Come prepared to try to get a job. I mean, let's face it, the competition is great. Some of the people who have sent me their work are in Los Angeles, San Francisco, New York, Houston, Dallas, and those are just some of the major markets. Uh, we're offering a very unique opportunity. For years, we've complained that we don't get the opportunity
to talk to the family in a voice that the family can understand. I stand on my laurels to say I will never deny a reporter or an anchor an opportunity to tell the black story. And I, you don't have to apologize for making it a black story. You don't have to, you know, it, it, that's not what it's about. It's about giving people an opportunity to be able to go into a community and tell the story without all of the, the stuff that sometimes goes along with that in the traditional newsroom. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's why I'm here. I mean, I had a good job before I came and took this one, but I haven't had the opportunity to preside over a shop ever like this. And I'm just tickled pink to, that I was selected among the many folks who they chatted with to be able to lead this organization. So I want people to come to us who are zealots for the news, who want to be able to tell a fair story, be impartial, and have a good time. We spend more time together than we do with our families. So I'm hoping that we can build that kind of an atmosphere inside of our newsroom. If you have a huge ego, check it at the door. I don't need it. If I see paper on the floor, I don't mind picking it up. We are one family, and I'm looking to try to develop that kind of mindset with the people that come into our organization. Okay, we have four questions that came in toward the end, um, and I will answer two of them just because I have, like, the list in front of me. The first one is which bureaus will Black News Channel have starting out? Um, New York, L.A., Atlanta, Chicago, D.C., New Orleans, Jacksonville, which is the home base, Orlando, Houston, and Detroit. Did I get them all, Gary? You did, but Tallahassee is the home base. Jacksonville uh, uh, is, is the closest market to us that has some of the things we need to, to have on our network. Gotcha. Thank you for clarifying that. Um, the next one is, how do we reach you via email? And thank you for your time. It's G Ward Law, G W O R D L A W at B T N C dot TV. That's Black TV Network Channel dot TV. G Ward Law at B T N C dot TV. Um, it says your list, your job listings don't list locations. How can one find out what jobs are available and which markets they're in? The bureau jobs are going to be in the places that we've uh, identified on this phone call. All the other jobs are in Tallahassee. Okay. Um, it says you are, are you saying you have deals with those cable stations? Or are you trying to get such distribution? We have distribution through the stations that I mentioned, which will give us at launch 33 to 45 million people. Okay. Uh, this is a classic uh, question from potential employees. If we don't hear from you, does that mean you're not interested? How often should we follow up if we don't initially hear from you? Let me start off with that answer since I do some recruiting. Do Please give people some time to look at everything before they try to reach out to you. Don't follow up like a week or two later. Okay, Gary, I'll let you take over. My father wants told me when I told him, I said, Dad, I prayed to God for a new bicycle. And I didn't get it. And my dad said, son, did it ever occur to you that God said no? <laughs> <laughs> I, I tell this little story because I can tell you right now, before this phone call, I got 7,000 emails from people around the world wanting to work for us. I can't possibly answer 7,000 emails. It's not humanly possible. It doesn't mean I don't love you. It doesn't mean I didn't vet your material. But I just am inundated, and I can't get back to everybody in a timely fashion. Okay. Um, I have one last question that occurred to me. Uh, in the markets that you all will be in, the black newspapers that are in those markets, will there be any type of partnership with the black press, the print black press in those markets that you'll be in? Absolutely, positively. I'm reaching out to them. It's just I haven't had the opportunity yet of getting there. I've been in this job since January 1. I'm doing 18-hour days as it is now. But before I launch, I'm going to try to get to all those folks. Okay. 
And hold on, one question just popped in. Will Black News Channel have a booth in Miami? Absolutely, and you'll see my charming face sitting there waiting <laughs> to talk to you. <laughs> okay. Well, you know what, for uh, the broadcast people that are bringing, you know, their reels, um, flash drives, will there be someone at the booth that will be critiquing their reels um, and things like that? Yes. Okay. And it says, another question, will we be able to make appointments with you at NABJ? I'm going to say probably not only because you know we're going to be inundated because we have jobs to fill. And I would hate to tell somebody to come and see me at 10 and there's 14 people in line. But you may okay. be able to come in and sign up for like the next day, that kind of thing. I promise we're going to have enough people there that we're going to talk to a lot of folks. Uh, but I expect that we're going to have a lot of folks, a lot of interest. Okay. And let's see, there's, there's another question. Oh, Lord. Okay. So at 7,000 emails and counting, can you tell us about your team who may be handling different areas for the network areas, talent recruitment, marketing, long form, digital partnerships, et cetera? Uh, et cetera? No. Okay. <laughs> I can't. Right now, <laughs> right now, it's me and my number two. Now, let me answer a question that hasn't been asked. Okay. Will everybody I hire on air be black? Mm. No. I'm not going to just say I'm going to hire just black folk on air. I'm going to hire journalists that are great journalists that are committed to telling the African-American story. If there was a network that launched and everybody on that network was white, would that make black folk mad? I think so. So I'm not okay. going to limit my scope. There may be a great bureau reporter in Detroit that the market loves who is an African-American. He or she may be Asian or Hispanic or whatever. I'm going to be fair when I do hires, but I can assure you that the majority of the faces that will be delivering the news will be African-American. Okay. And someone wants to know the street address uh, for headquarters. Right now, we're in a temporary facility, so that really wouldn't do you a lot of good. Okay. Our building is being, is being constructed as we speak, and so it won't be available for us to even occupy it until late July. Okay. But our temporary address is on the website. Okay, so if you all heard that, the temporary address is on the website. The best way to get in contact with us is through the website. And the best way to get in contact with me is through my personal email address. Okay. If there are no more questions, uh, family, because I don't see any more, we're going to wrap this up and let Mr. Wardlaw go. Um, thank you so much for taking the time out. Um, you let out a lot of information and I think that people will be um, flooding your booth in Miami and probably your email by the time we get off the phone with you. Oh, wait, the more the merrier. Come on. Let's do something. Mm -hmm. I appreciate it. Thanks. Okay, so hold on. One question. Given how swamped you are, what's the best way to pitch original produced documentary content? G Word Law at BNT, BNTC.com. Okay. I do read, literally read every one of my emails. I read them. You may not be able to respond to all of them, but you read but them. I read them. Okay. All right. Well, thank you so much, um, Broadcast Task Force. Appreciate you taking out this time. I know all of the members got this valuable information. We may have some more questions that come in. Um, I will make sure if I get some, I will send an email to you um, and we can try to get those answered to the, uh, for the members. On behalf of the Black News Channel, thank the NABJ family for allowing this opportunity for me to chat with you. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. All right. Take care. All right. Enjoy the rest of your day. You too.